from Chicago and the site of Chicago Ideas Week, this is a special edition of Meet the Press with David Gregory. We are back live from Chicago with our political roundtable. Joining us this morning, Democratic Congressman Luis Gutierrez, Republican Congressman Aaron Schock, Vanity Fair contributing editor and co-author of All the Devils Are Here, The Hidden Story of the Financial Crisis, now out in paperback, Bethany McLean, and senior political analyst for Time Magazine, Mark Halpern. Uh, welcome to all of you. Mark flew in. Everybody else is uh, more or less local here, so uh, we appreciate you being here. I want to talk about the economy, the president's prospects, and I spoke this week to Vice President Biden about all of the above, particularly this issue of how they're going to deal with Republicans with your party in this climate. This is what he said. Your view as you talk about whether the jobs bill is going to be passed is that this president does not have a partner among Republicans on Capitol Hill. I think he does have a partner in the bulk of the leadership, but they are seriously hamstrung. Look, I can tell you without in any way violating the confidence. I think John Boehner would tell you. I think Eric Cantor would tell you. We had a much bigger proposal that I was personally negotiating with them as to how to deal with the debt crisis. And they could not sell it. I'm just telling you straight. I have a bad habit of saying what I believe. I don't want to get in the way of that now. <laughs> Look, guys. I, this is just Joe Biden's impression. I truly believe if Eric, Joe Biden, Barack Obama, John Boehner were allowed to settle a deal in the room, we would have had a deal. But that's not how it works. No, it's not how it works. Which and they're not strong enough leaders to get it passed. Is that your view? No, my view is that their party is not the Republican Party that we all know. One of the worst things that has happened to us, in my view, is we need a strong Republican Party. We need a Republican Party that's united. We need a Republican Party you can sit down with and say, okay, this is a deal. Can you deliver? Can you deliver on the deal? Is it strong enough of a Republican Party for its nominee to beat this president? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's strong enough to beat both of us. It's strong enough. Look, look uh, no matter what the circumstance, at the end of the day, the American people right now are, many of them are in real trouble, an even larger percentage are, have stagnant wages, and a significant majority of the American people believe that the country's not moving in the right direction. That is never a good place to be going into a re-election. Whether it's your fault or not your fault, it's almost sometimes irrelevant. But what I'm counting on, I'm counting on what I read out there, this judgment of the American people to decide. They know the hole we're in. They know how far we've come out. They're dissatisfied how fast we're going. And they're going to have to choose whether or not the path we have set the country on is the path that we should continue to go or we should go back to liberating the economy. Congressman Schock, what do you hear from the vice president? Is that political vulnerability? You know what? I hear a lot of negativity. And uh, what, what strikes me as disingenuous at all, is all the attack on Republicans as do nothing. As in his third year now in the United States Congress, I will tell you, uh, last year was the first year since 1974 that a Democratic House failed to pass a budget. We got a majority this year, and we didn't just criticize what the president rolled out in his budget. We actually did our own budget. Uh, as a Republican House that did entitlement reform, something that was the unthinkable, that bend the cost curve, that put us on a projection towards balance uh, as a country. And guess what, David? It got more votes. Republicans and Democrats voted for that budget than any budget that passed the Congress in the last 10 years. And in addition to the budget, we've passed 100 bills in the House that are sitting in the Senate waiting for action. And so to hear the Vice President say that he doesn't have an equal partner or that somehow the House and the Republicans are just do nothing is not only uh, a political statement, it's just not factually correct. Congressman, well, why do you think it's tough for Republicans right now to arrive at a consensus choice if you look at this top tier, Romney, Kane, Perry? Yeah. What's going on? Well, I think Republicans are, are fleshing out who the strongest candidate will be to win. Uh, I don't think competition is a bad thing. I'm reminded of the Democratic primary last time when 
Uh, Obama and, and Hillary Clinton went back and forth. I think at the end of the day that was a good thing right. for Democrats. Who's is, toughest to beat Obama in your judgment? You know, I haven't chosen a candidate yet. I, I, I like the idea of them competing and, and seeing, but I think when you have over half of the country saying they're looking at somebody new, mm -hmm. the longer that conversation takes place among our candidates, the more people that are going to get engaged. And I think at the end of the day, what's important, David, is our party get behind whomever that candidate finally is. I think the president, the reality, the protest, Congressman Schock, are also about the fact that the middle class is not getting any better, not getting healthier. You're exactly right. I mean, middle class wages are stagnating. What is your party doing to deal with that disparity? Well, first of all, I'd like, to, I'd like to say, Bethany made an excellent point. Everyone's focusing on whether you support the protesters or don't support the protesters. Why are they protesting? It's because we have failed to implement economic policy that allows more opportunity for more Americans and for the pie economically in this country to grow. And what we have to have is pro-growth policies. To your point, what are Republicans doing in the House? We've been doing a whole host of things. First of all, passing a budget that deals with entitlement reform that bends the cost curve so there's a confidence in Washington, D.C. that we're going to deal with our debt crisis as a country. Second, passing over 100 bills that are wa waiting for action in the Senate. Things that are regulatory reform, reining in some of these EPA changes. One just this week uh, on cement companies that would put uh, nearly 20,000 Americans out of work uh, that are currently working if the EPA is not stopped from this regulatory change. Mark, Mark